Welcome, market participants, to another Three Things in Credit. I'm Van Hester, Chief Strategist at KBRA. Each week, we bring you three things impacting credit markets that we think you should know about. A columnist in the New York Times opined this week that economic indicators are a, quote, Jackson Pollock painting of data points and trends. If you think hard enough, they begin to make a bit of sense, unquote. I think Mr. Pollack would take offense at the suggestion that anything he did made sense. In any event, we'll help you make sense of all of this. This week, our three things are, one, the Fed's pivot. Are we really there? Two, a bounce in the price of risk assets, real or dead cat. And three, 2023 corporate earnings. What do those estimates tell us about today? Let's dig a bit deeper. Did you really think the Fed was ready to pivot? I have to admit to being shocked that market watchers have woven together a narrative that the Fed's pivot was upon us, or at least within sight. After all the reasoning goes, Chair Powell himself said so. Current rates are close to neutral, that magical aspirational word, meaning they are no longer accommodative, right? Oh, and by the way, why else would risk markets be bouncing higher? Well, his actual comments observed that where the FOMC had hiked to, two and a quarter to two and a half percent, was, quote, in the range of what we think is neutral, unquote. We also think he made plenty clear that inflation at nine percent is certainly not. That's nowhere near the Fed's stated goal of two percent. And while Powell acknowledged uncertainty today as to the impact of the central bank's shock and awe strategy deploying successive 75 basis point hikes, he did make clear there's probably, quote, significant tightening in the pipeline, unquote. I think that's pretty clear. He reiterated the FOMC's median forecast by year-end 2022 to be three and a quarter to three and a half percent, which just happens to be right on top of consensus. He did add in the press conference that his best guess today is for another 50 basis points in 2023. Economists in the market are a bit more dovish on this point, seeing a pivot in early spring 2023 and a terminal rate closer to 3.5% than 4%. In any event, just to make sure you weren't confused by his choice of words, a parade of Fed officials was quickly deployed to drive home the point that, yes, the battle is just beginning on the inflation front and the Fed will not pivot until it can declare victory over inflation. We stand by our view that the FOMC changed its stripes back in the first half of 2022 to become singularly focused, ideologic in fact, on catching up to the hawks in response to withering criticism from certain peer economists about being too slow to tighten. There still is plenty of talk from committee members about being data dependent, but make no mistake about it, avoiding Volcker's double dip recession is the guidepost here and financial conditions are not likely to reach neutral until inflation is tamed. The bad news for credit is that that will likely take a recession to get there. All right, on to our second thing, the rally in risk. Junk bond market is signaling the U.S. will avoid a recession. That was the headline coming across your Bloomberg terminal this week. Admittedly, I snickered when I saw it. What nonsense. Market participants, especially those among us who have been through a cycle or two, know there's a lot more to this story. But let's not simply dismiss this with a snicker. After all, we've rallied hard in credit, especially in high yield, so it's worth digging into. First off, context. High yield spreads leading into a recession typically head north to over 800 basis points. In the COVID shock of 2020, we got to 1,100 basis points, but that really didn't count due to the nature of the shock and the magnitude and speed of the federal response. In the global financial crisis, about as bad as it gets because it was global, the economy was dangerously levered, and bad behavior was centered in the financial system, spreads reached 2,000 basis points. In the wake of the WorldCom Enron, spreads reached 1,000 basis points. So if the point of the Bloomberg piece is that high-yield spreads reached only just shy of 600 basis points before snapping back in 150 basis points, I suppose you could draw a conclusion that markets are suggesting we just might be able to avoid a recession. Which brings us to our second point of context, where we are in the cycle. 
Yes, growth in real GDP has been negative in the first half, but jobs have been growing at a quite healthy levels, nearly 460,000 a month on average over the last six months. Corporate profit growth is still positive, as is consumer spending. Yes, the Fed has only just begun its tightening program, but what a program it is, cramming six hikes into two meetings while embarking on an aggressive quantitative tightening initiative. The point is, the worst is yet to come. Tightening into a slowing economy doesn't make a lot of sense to many, and it will clearly leave a mark. We see the timing of the impact of the worst of the slowdown as a late 2022 and into 2023 story. A couple of final points. Technical factors have also been favorable. High yields, higher quality skew due to large fallen angels that reside in the double B category has made buying those names on special too good for many to pass up. And don't lose sight of normalizing issuance. High yield issuance is likely to fall off significantly in 2022 and 2023 as, one, issuers pulled forward issuance into the Fed-supported markets in 2020 and 2021. Two, buyout volumes fall off in a decidedly suboptimal market for LBOs. And three, private credit continues to take share from high yield. This market move is likely to be more a reaction to how powerful the June sell-off was. That newfound cheapness and belief, delusional, that the Fed was about to pivot has been enough to tighten spreads meaningfully, but don't expect them to stay there. All right, on to our third thing, the forward look. We are well along in Q2 earnings season. 410 companies have reported thus far out of the S&P 500, with 62% showing year-over-year growth and 75% better than estimates. Earnings growth thus far is 7.6% on sales growth of 13.1%. All things considered, it doesn't strike us as all that bad. But peel that onion a bit, and the numbers really aren't that strong, as all of the growth, and then some, is in energy. But pulling back, earnings contraction across firms in a recession is typically down 15-20%, to so we're a far cry from that today. But as we think through the future, our view is that a recession will materialize toward year-end and spill over into 2023. Now, understanding that our view is not universally held, we thought it would be an interesting exercise nonetheless to take stock of where corporate earnings are forecast to be in 2023. So for full year 2023, analysts are forecasting year-over-year net income growth of 7.4%, matching what is expected in 2022. And if we strip out energy, year-over-year growth in the S&P is expected to hit 9.9% in 2023 versus 1.2% for 2022, so analysts are looking for higher quality earnings growth in 2023. The EPS figure for full year 23 has come down from its June peak, but only by 3%, and that puts the current estimate still 10% above the original estimate established by the street back in Q1 of 2021. So, a healthy pop in earnings in 2023 despite many calling for recession in at least part of next year and the likelihood that margins are expected to come under pressure. Speaking of which, net income margins are expected to grow in 2023 to 13.5% from 13.1% forecast for full year 2022. 13.5% would match the all-time high set back in 2021, the year that stimulus-fueled supercharged economic growth. Analysts expect strong earnings growth to come back to consumer discretionary, forecast to be up 30% next year, while commodity sectors, energy and materials, are expected to fall back, down 16 and 7% respectively, after facing difficult comparisons to inflation-driven 2022. So what conclusions do we draw out of these estimates, knowing that analyst estimates typically skew to the overly optimistic side? Well, our most important takeaway is that these figures, even haircut for a recession, do not suggest a downturn that will be deep and protracted, something we agree with. We believe the relatively strong starting points for consumers and businesses coming into the downturn and the relative strength of the financial system provide solid support for this as a base case. We would expect earnings to come in lower than these estimates, however, 
given margin pressure and the effects of monetary tightening and geopolitical interference. But again, all things considered, a backdrop that should contain spread widening from levels we typically see in more severe downturns. So there you have it. Three things in credit. One, the Fed's pivot. No, we're not there yet. Two, a bounce in the price of risk assets. Oversold in June and with a technical wind at its back, we don't expect these gains to hold. And three, 2023 corporate earnings growth. Overly optimistic? Sure. But there is an underlying durability to many sectoral stories. As always, thanks for joining us. Don't forget to check in on KBRA.com for our latest research and ratings reports. See you next week.